I don't believe in regret. I don't, well, I'm not going to say I don't believe because belief is like a whole other thing, mm-hmm. but I have a knowing and I know that if there's something that happens within my experience, I know that number one, nothing happens outside of me. I'm fully aware of all the things that I manifest and I'm fully aware of the consciousness that I have of myself and no one's dictating to me how I'm going to go. I'm fully aware that I'm dictating it to myself. So if I do something and I might feel like I faltered or I do something that I'm like, oh, why did I do that? I totally understand that that's part of my journey. And I know that's something that I have to go through. Ankh is one, uh, a symbol, of a life symbol. Mm-hmm. It's one, a symbol of womanhood. It dates back to ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt. Um, it's a hieroglyph that was a symbol of ongoing life. It was a symbol of the like strong matriarchal symbol. And if you break down the Ankh, it has three main parts. The long part here. Is what they call the feminine pr- principle. It's the phallic portion of the Ankh. And this is what they call the fallopian tube of the woman. And then this is what they call mm. the womb or the uterus. It's um, 120, 120, 120 mm. to c- create the complete 360. So it's all about the, the life process. The man, the, the woman, the core principle, and the creation of life over and over. I'm more so um, inspired by a lot of the strength and courage that I see in the women in my family. They haven't allowed time to really like take a toll on their spirit, so they don't even age, you know. It's really, really cool. So, trays that tap three parts. The, the S is the set, the T is the tap, the tap is the balance of the light, so it's tray, the darkness and the light. I started getting into face painting. It started out as a performance thing. Whenever I would do a show, I would get really into like telling a story through face, through face paint, but also being true to the culture. It's not always just about the aesthetic. Sometimes there's something deeper and cultural related to it. So the process of me painting is a very spiritual process for me. And it's something that I do to clear my mind. And it's something that also helps censor me. And it pulls together a lot of things, a lot of the like look that I'm into. So these are like some little, I'll call them like kente cloth, kind of little skippy, dingy little things I like. Um, I want to actually make some of my yeah. own. I love them because they're super comfortable and they're really thin. They're like almost like linen, silk thin, like very, very comfy. I got them from a man who's from Thailand. They have that over-exaggerated drop crotch and it's usually a, a huge, huge piece that's just added to the middle. These are some bracelets that my mom sent to me. I don't know where she got them from. And they're she, amazing. They are amazing. And she's not into stuff like this, which was like really special to me because I mean she picked them out for me when she saw them. This is an elephant head. Um I like elephants. This is a lot of elephant going on. I didn't realize that until just now. But That's yeah. Crazy. These uh elephant head it actually broke and I took some solder wire and just kinda wrapped it around it so that because I can't Where'd let you it go yet. Um I found it in a hallway at FIT like in the dorm room on the floor in the hallway when I was living there and I was like Joink! Come on! So. And I think these, I didn't find any earrings. Yeah, these are just like my wooden plugs that I'm working on uh, stretching my ears out. It's just like, oh, you are? It's one of those like rites of passage kind of things. Usually within West African cultures when people get their ears stretched, it's about the process and to be able to kind of like track it and see how far you can stretch and how far you can go it's a, it's a very ritual process thing it's a spiritual thing there's always there's always something spiritual about what the physical body can endure because no matter what it's not penetrating the spirit i got this from cambodia this one just stuck out to me immediately and it's and it's raw silk and it's just vibrant i love it like my favorite one um this is also Alchemy 9. It's um, a crystal piece that she did for me. Um, it, it really does help me get centered. I have a book, Rock of Ages, that I always um, look up to to get a, like, a little brief history of my crystals and stuff. But this is like one of my favorite crystal pieces. I got these from my best friend. He got these um, thrifting in Philadelphia. Um, they kind of give me like a kind of Aztec, Mayan, cartoony kind of thing. Okay, so from head to toe, um, in January I went to Cambodia for a month. I found this really nice lady who had like a table of all these really, really beautiful hand spun silk scarves. And so I got like black, gray, cream, then I have some other ones with like other colors. I got stuff like this and just mm-hmm. a lot of like really, really cool things. I'm really into 
a lot of um, jewelry that's ancient or jewelry that comes from different cultures or jewelry that has a very like rustic kind of feel. So I found that on the street. I was in LA last month and I got this from a really dope downtown boutique. I got this and another one I got from the streets. I got this in the African Festival, downtown Brooklyn. This, um, pretty sure I got it from a 99 cent store. These are my babies. <laughs> They're long crotch and low crotch. And they have cargo pockets in the back. And they're custom made for me. I've traveled to Israel, Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, Korea, Hong Kong, and Cambodia. And in each one of those places, there are so many more commonalities and there are differences. There are so many things with language, dance, music, um, architecture, like all of these things that show up in so many different places. You see the same thing in Australia, South America, then Northern Africa, as you see in the Midwest. Like there are so many of these relics that we see and we've just been able to say all these things are different, they're all separate, they're their own thing. But for me, it's more so that these things you? are all connected. And that's how I've been able to really hold on to that. It's more so my father's side of the family that's, uh, that's into art. My grandfather was a painter. My grandmother was a dancer and a model, and she was like very like extravagant. She still is. She still talks to me about like the old days and like how she was like a diva or whatever. Um, we manifest our own destinies all the time, and I know exactly what I want to do right now, and that's what I'm doing. I want to travel. I want to perform. I want to write, and I don't have any attachments to people or things that prevent me from doing that. So I decided. It would May, June, that yeah, Berlin is, sounds like a good idea right now, so I'll go to Berlin and I'll write and I'll perform and I'll meet people and I'll do all the things that I want to do there because like, why not? I'm 22. I could just get up and go, <laughs> you know? I, I don't, I've never felt like I have to be stuck in my neighborhood or I have to be stuck in a predicament.